Fools! Okay, that was dramatic. What's up, y'all? In part three of the Residential Locksmith Starter Series, we are gonna talk about tools because without tools, you cannot do what you need to do. First and foremost, the main tool that you need is your brain, use it! Other than that, you do have a variety of hand tools out here. Now, I will be focusing only on hand tools and a couple of power tools, of course, like a drill. Not really gonna be discussing key machines because when you're rekeying residential locks, I mean, you, you, you need them. If you're gonna be a locksmith, you're gonna need a key machine at some point, but I know in the beginning, it's kind of hard to invest in the tools that you need and a key machine and everything else that you have to pay as we discussed in our legal section. But we are gonna be discussing pretty much the bare minimum of the tools that you will need to rekey, take off and rekey and put back on residential locks. We're not gonna delve off into the, uh, the heavier duty quite yet. We will be discussing it in this series as far as installing locks, and we'll get into some further tools during that time. But literally this video is specifically the tools that you would need most likely. You know, there's with the tool world, there's always tools that you're gonna need more than others. There's also variations of said tools that you're gonna need more than others. And if anybody ever asks you about a tool that you might be purchasing, significant other, uh, you need it. You have to have it, uh, even if you don't, but that's between us. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started on tools. First and foremost, pin and kit. Of course, to rekey locks, you're going to need a pin and kit. And pin and kits come in all shapes, sizes, and flavors, but I highly recommend you stick with a 003. That's right, I said it, an 003. I mean, you can get a 005, but that's just stupid. I mean, that's just not, you just get a 003 metal pin and kit. There are uh, smaller pin and kits that are out there that let you do like either one brand of lock, which we're gonna get into in the next episode when we start talking about keys. We're gonna talk about brands, very common brands that you're gonna see. But to sustain yourself long-term, go ahead and invest in a decent 003 kit that way, when you run across some of this oddball stuff where the, the spacing may be off or there's something wonky with the cylinder and you have to go up or down a few sizes, you're able to with the O3 kit compared to manufacturer only kits like, you know, this Quickset Wiser. You know, Wiser has, has changed over the years and it's now Quickset. So if you run across old Wiser, you're not gonna be able to use kits like that. You would literally need a Wiser kit, which I probably don't make anymore. So anyway, let's get started with hand tools. I'm gonna go through each one pretty quickly because as we progress through taking off different brands and different styles of locks and rekeying them, they will be discussed in depth then. So this is just kind of a brief summary of kind of all the stuff, some of the, some of the a portion of the stuff that you're gonna need to simply rekey residential locks. So let's get started. First and foremost, the pin and kit. We're gonna go over the pin and kit in detail in the next video that's gonna be about keys and locks uh, in general, but the pin and kit obviously is one tool that you're gonna need. All right, next, one of the most common locks in the world that you're gonna see is a quick set brand right there. And you will need something to remove these clips. Now sure, you could do it with, you know, pliers or needle nose. If, if this is all you had, you could grab a pair of needle nose pliers and use it to uh to push the clip off this is what we've all had to do when we don't have the right tool to do something with but this pickle fork is what it's called uh, just because i don't know why really but uh that is used for primarily quick set you can use it on different brands but that is what this guy is these things are only a couple of bucks each at most so buy a five pack, that way you can have them every which way. Third clip or retaining ring pliers. It could be called a couple of different things. I use Walds and Wild. One of the two is not made anymore. This is convertible, so you can go uh, for the external and then flip this to internal. But for the most part, you're, when you run across old wiser locks like this, you would need it to remove. See how that clip is with these little pegs on it you insert this there and just open it and take it off also one other little feature of these is uh when it gets bent out like that you can come in 
and kind of bend it back tight before we put it back on. Plug followers, this is the biggie. There are many, many different kind of plug followers. And one shortcoming with plug followers is they are not hollow, they're not deep enough. So I go and I buy half inch brass tube and I sometimes will make my own. This one is actually 550 because some commercial mortise cylinders, especially these Corbin guys that we're gonna talk about later on in the series have a bigger plug. There's pretty much three different sizes and there is one kit, I can't remember who makes it, I think maybe HPC. You got a small one. This is used on old, old antique, uh, like national and stuff. They had a smaller than the half inch diameter. This really isn't half inch. The ones from the uh, lock companies are usually 0.495, which is just below half inch. And that lets it get into tighter plugs. So if you have this half inch and you've got a super tight plug, you may have problems. That's why it's a good idea to get a few, you know, you can, you can collect these. Like this one's kind of a, almost like a giveaway. Some of them come in pin kits, and you can even get guys to make them, like Bobby Keys made this guy. However, like I said, one shortcoming is none of them are completely hollow, and here's one I made out of stainless steel. This is another one I've made out of brass. Right there, you can still see the sticker on it. So yes, you can easily go buy some brass tubing. You may have to cut it you know, with a Dremel or something, but to get it to go, over certain plugs, which we will again cover in future videos. So very important plug followers, and uh, that is to keep when you're when you're using it, you're you're shoving it through and removing the plug. There's pins and springs, which we're going to talk about when we start rekeying our locks. This thing keeps all that in there. You have to have this uh, to rekey locks. Period. Tweezers. Now out there, there are these little guys that have this little little weirdo tip and that's designed to grasp the little pin. But these aren't great for using in general. In general, I mean, with this Schlage or any brand that uses a screw cap, you have to push this pin down, right, to unscrew it. It makes it hard to do that because these are blunt. I prefer, I much prefer pointed tip, fine pointed tip tweezers. These are way more flexible. They grab the pins just fine. You may have to rearrange it a little bit, but once you use this, and you will be using tweezers a lot, you have much better ability to unscrew these caps and also reach in there and grab that spring because sometimes those springs don't come out very easily. And you know what? If you only have pin and tweezers, that, guy, that guy's just not going to cut it. So go ahead and get used to using a fine pointed tweezer. I like the at, at least seven inch long, six and a half to seven inch long. These shorter ones are not ideal for me because I do open it up like that. And when you have the shorter version, you can't do that as easily. Your choice of picks, that is entirely up to you. There are lots of different ones out there. We use HPC, Dang Do, Great. A diamond and the two and a quarter twist that is pretty much my go-to pick and that is because some locks like the wise old wiser knobs and schlag we don't we don't have these for fun y'all we have these because there's no keys for locks and some locks won't come apart without a key if you don't have a key you have to pick the lock it's not fun for us for the most part it is literally just a annoyance cap removal tools there are a few varieties out there i've always liked the wiser the green one again now that wiser's changed its uh, direction i don't even know if these are available but you have one from our friends over at clk i hadn't even tried this one just got this one in some smaller ones the only problem is going back to the tweezers these don't fit necessarily all of them because of this that little backer in the schlage specifically some of these don't work quite as well as they do on say old wiser dead bolts which i don't have out here there's a variety of them and a variety of styles of the tips of them and uh yeah you you don't necessarily need these but it makes it handy it makes it a little bit quicker to progress through when you're taking apart a bunch of locks this for example see that doesn't fit this wiser one that one fits so they're not all made equally a variety of small 
screwdrivers. It was good to have a large variety of these guys that are going to be used for everything. Now, y'all know this is one of my favorite multi ones. This one has, uh, I think, an electrician. So I'm not fond of that, how the little guy goes out. But having the different tips is good. And once we move into the commercial realm with glass door, narrow style, you'll definitely need one of these guys. However, these are not great for prime. And in some cases where you have, say, the Schlage with that little cap, it's good to have a variety of different fixed blade styles uh, so that you can get in there and pop off those caps. Uh, different ones that are shorter for unscrewing cylinder screws on mortise cylinders again we'll get into that later uh, but yeah different different variety of flathead small screwdrivers 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 now you know there are multi ones actually this six dollar husky is one of my you know favorite ones because it's so light in the back compared to some of these heavier guys have a lot of weight in the back when you're unscrewing a lot of locks and I do it like this, that, that not having as much weight in the back helps. This gives you a uh, 3 16 a number one Phillips, and a number two Phillips, and a quarter inch, which, as we're going to talk about with the fixed style, while these are handy, you really do need a plain old fixed blade screwdriver. Four inch is my preferred, round shank is my preferred because when you have a doorknob and you're trying to unscrew something, the round shank is less of a chance of hitting it and, and scratching the edge of the lock. Number two, Phillips is pretty much your most common one. It's a good idea to have a number one Phillips as well for unscrewing mortise cylinders and a four inch blade, round shank is again, three sixteenths, five thirty second, somewhere in that range with this narrow style tip. I prefer the Klein, it's still my favorite. Uh, this is a Klein, uh, this one's actually, I'm starting to use this PB Swiss. I've been using it since Stuart. Thanks again for sending this to me. This has become my favorite driver right now and I've been putting it through some pretty heavy use. Uh, and I like it in conjunction with the Klein flathead because I can, when they're in my back pocket, I can tell the difference between them. And this one's not as important, but it's good to have in an emergency. Every so often you're gonna run across a situation, like say a bar door's locked and you can reach in and unscrew the deadbolt. That's where this stubby comes into play. The Klein is the stubbiest of the stubbies. Again, has all the four of the most important ones. Plus you can use this to bear down on mortise cylinders when they have a stubborn screw, like uh, and you're not so high up pair of pliers now i am not you know i i will say often that if you don't know if you're going to use a tool then you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on it but honestly the nipex alligator pliers are about a 25 dollar pair of pliers they're very narrow there's the cobra version with the button but i like the alligator because they're super smooth you can get into really narrow areas and uh, it goes up to pretty dang big so that you can hold you know, pretty much everything you're gonna to need to hold with it. Uh, so I would go ahead and definitely invest in a pair of those. Uh, you know, channel locks are the same, but they're thicker, they're kind of clunkier. Uh, and this is kind of a, this may be, you know, not as an important purchase, because I did go for years and years without one of these, but it is very handy. This is an engineer screw removal plier when they're stripped out, a lot of times on doors, on latches, the screw part will start unscrewing and it won't come out. You can use this guy with this specialty head tip of it to, to get in there and, and pull it out. So because it goes forward and this has that angle, right? It's a little bit harder to use a regular pair of pliers. You can use these, which I did for years. And then I got these and you can latch onto the screw and just turn it directly. So not as important you don't necessarily need to you know have that in your toolbox but it is a good item to have with or uh, there's another brand out there these are about 12 13 dollars at home depot or lowe's both of them have one carries one brand one carries the other uh, these are pretty dang important to have because you have to cut tail pieces often and sometimes especially on rim cylinders which again we'll get into in a future video uh, but this can get in there and just clip that. Boom. You can also use linesman's pliers. They're more expensive. This is more of a $50 pair of pliers compared to a $13 pair of pliers. 
and uh, but it does the same thing. So if you already have lines and suppliers, you, you don't necessarily need one of those, but these are good to have because, you know, preserve the edge on your linesman as much as possible. Allen wrenches, my two preferred ones are the Eklund 21171, which goes from 1.5 millimeter up to six millimeter, and the Eklund 20912, goes from 0.050 up to 3 16 You will very rarely need something bigger than any of these. When you do, you may have to buy, you know, maybe you get a set with some bits in there that are bigger. And these also have the Jason mod to them so that you can get right up on an edge without it worrying about scratching. All these links I'm gonna post at the end of this video. So uh, yeah, but definitely important to have those. And on that same topic, a set of torx drivers you never know when you're going to run up on torx so any type of torx kits that you have when you buy multi-bit kits often they'll come with torx but they won't often come with small torx from 10 down and when you start getting into the commercial world and you have say everest mortise cylinders they use a lot of torx as well as electronic locks uh, use a T15 to take those off. So definitely need a few Torx kits, your brand, your choice, however you want to go about it. It's your call on that, but you need them. Smart key is part of our world now. And while you do have the ability, you can take apart a smart key and reset it without one of these. If you're going to be doing any type of residential locksmithing, you need to go ahead and invest in either a cradle or the better resetter. I prefer the cradle because you can't lose it as easily as you lose the battery setter because I haven't been able to find mine in a while. I know it's around here somewhere. I think they, uh, they used to be, they started off red, now they're black. And yes, they jam up, so I always buy one or two of them. They're about 35 bucks, but while you can do onesies and twosies, and sometimes some people are really quick at taking them apart and resetting them without this, I would highly recommend you still have this sitting around ready to use. If you come up on a house with 10 doors with no key, you could either clip out a key and use them or you can uh, just reset them all. It's just easy to use, so. Speaking of clippers, this is one thing that I never thought I would say, but this is actually a uh, pretty handy, pretty good thing to have around, especially if you don't have a key machine uh, because you can do all sorts of stuff. You can shorten keys with it. You can cut out keys in an emergency. Little issue clipper, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much something that it would be a really good idea to have this guy around for whatever use you might need. Face in depth keys. Uh, you might wonder, you know, it, it's a key, it's a tool, it is a tool. Uh, these come in handy for a lot if you only have a duplicator and you need to co cut the original. The original design of these things was so that you could chuck up a number four, cut the number four depth. And then cut them. It's an awkward way to code cut keys. But in addition to that, I don't really use them for that. I use them to, you know, if I need to decode a key, and we're not talking about lishies here, we take apart the lock and you go through and you can write down which one by inserting these in there. You know, if you put it in there and it's level, it's a number four. Uh, there's a wide variety of things that you can do with a couple of sets of your, your more common uh, space and depth keys. As we progress throughout it, you are definitely going to need a hammer and a chisel. You don't need a big hammer. That's a 12 inch or yeah, 12 inch est wing curved claw. You do not need the straight claw. You definitely want the curved claw because you're usually tapping on it pretty close to your face and having that curve keeps it from whacking into your face. Three quarter inch chisel, most latches are one inch wide, but I prefer the three quarter inch, gives me a little bit more control. Tape measure, most locksmiths don't need to measure anything over a foot, so a small tape measure is fine. We're not building lumber, we're not building decks or anything. So eight foot, 10 foot, it's all you need. I like this one because it's so small and thin. And a drill, now I'm invested in the Milwaukee platform, so that's what I'm using right now. I'm not saying you should go buy a Milwaukee. You can buy DeWalt, you can buy whatever, buy what you can afford. You will be using the drill a lot. So if you're gonna invest some money, go ahead and invest it in a good drill system. However, if you're on a budget and you can only afford say a Harbor Freight one or whatever, then buy it. You need some type of drill. You can always upgrade as you pay for it. As you think about it, if you're using this on a job, you're gonna be charging to use this guy 
So the more money that you save up, you can invest in a better quality. Not saying Milwaukee's the best quality out there, but yeah, you need a drill of some kind. A cheap set, you can buy these kits almost every holiday for 10 bucks or 12 bucks. Uh, and really that's all you need. That's all you need on that. And of course, with all the other ones, you need spade bits and all that. We're gonna get into that as we progress through the little bit more advanced section of these videos. That kind of wraps up pretty much what you're mostly gonna need as you start reeking in residential locks. Again, you're gonna need a whole lot of other stuff, but right now we're just gonna focus on those tools. And as I go through and take off each brand and we rekey it, you'll see an in-depth use for pretty much everything we have over there. So thanks for watching y'all. And uh, next one coming out is gonna be on keys. We're gonna kind of teach you a little bit about keys and the pen and kit, get more into detail on that. And then we're gonna start rekeying actual locks itself. So thanks for watching y'all. We'll catch y'all next video.